policy coordination may be one of the oldest challenges for governments, but has become even more important as the problems confronting governments change and the ideas of new public management are diffused. For Hadiza Balausman, who is the special advisor to President Tinubu on policy coordination and was also a former managing director of the Nigerian Ports Authority, she is expected to ensure policy alignment and accountability in the policies made by President Tinubu. We're joining us in our Abuja studio to talk more on her role is in government is the senior aunt, uh, special advisor, uh, I beg your pardon, to President Tinubu on policy coordination, Hadiza Bala Usman. Hadiza, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Right. Let's begin with uh, this matter of ensuring policy alignment and accountability. Help Nigerians better understand what your role is specifically at achieving uh, this, talking about policy alignment and uh, accountability in this current administration. Um, yes, um, the role of my office is to ensure that there is um, coordination across ministries, departments and agencies. And just as you mentioned, one of the historic challenges that have been observed um, within governance is the inability for us to that um, there is synergy across um, policy and sector. Observed this um, over the years, and uh, President Tinubu was clear that he needed to um, up the ante to ensure that um, all MDAs are clear on exactly what they intend to do, and they are also able to clearly define and coordinate aspect of interrelationship between um, sectoral policy positions. Um, we have effectively commenced um, doing our work. We've also looked to see to ensure that um, while there are policy deployment and um, across MDAs, there's also understanding of the respective deliverables expected of ministries, departments, and agencies of government. Um, I'm sure you would have heard um, several um, submissions around effectiveness of, of coordination. The other aspect of that is to ensure that there's clarity in deliverables and there's accountability um, for ministries um, which would cascade down to agencies of government. Mm. Yeah, so to better understand, you know, the concept of policy coordination and alignment, you know, how does this policy coordination process work uh, within the administration of President Balatinubu? And then what mechanisms are, are in place to ensure effective implementation so far? Okay, um, we're working to initially um, some of the aspects of coordination sits with um, deployment and effectiveness of our central coordination and delivery unit we sit with the office of the secretary to the government um, we have worked effectively to define exactly uh, um, the deliverables for each ministry and those deliverables are also deliverables that i mentioned cascade to the agencies of government so for example um, you have the sectoral deliverables for a sector in health and everything that is contained within the value chain or the ecosystem within that sector will be contained within the deliverables. Those deliverables are translated into key performance indicators for the respective ministries. And once you have your key performance indicators, you're able to clearly understand what your deliverables are over the period of um, the four years of the administration. We've commenced um, engagement with each ministry. We had uh, bilateral sessions with all the ministries um, in, 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 in Nigeria as of today. We had um, each ministry take ownership of their respective deliverables, which um, we were able to um, synthesize across our presidential advisory council reports. We're able to take from the National Development Plan document and also the Renewed Hope Manifesto. We came up with our clear deliverables for each ministry. We've defined the key performance indicators. And we've had each ministry have a sit down and an engagement on the details of exactly what is expected of them. Um, in forbearance to that, we've also ensured that the budgetary provision for um, the upcoming 2024 budget are, are in, in coherence with what has been defined as your deliverable. So each uh, ministry has been mandated to ensure that the, their deliverables are aligned with their budgetary provision that 
um, they'll be submitting, um, which would be forwarded by Mr. President to National Assembly. But um, what is important is um, the understanding that you have your, um, there's a policy position that has been so defined in your sector, there's a deliverable that is tied to that policy, and there are key performance indicators that have been detailed for the respective deliverable that you're required to do. And all of those have clearly uh, uh, um, budgetary provision that will be provided for them. And um, in so doing, we intend to commence a, a mechanism for um, tracking of the progress of each of those deliverables. And um, I think an important aspect of what we, we are doing is uh, to ensure that there's full ownership by the ministries, to ensure that the ministries have an understanding and appreciation of exactly what Mr. President expects of them. Um, the other side of it is also we're ensuring that you have full stakeholder ownership and stakeholder relation, meaning that um, the deliverables are so defined by each ministry will be deliverables that will be unveiled to Nigerians so that Nigerians would work with this administration and work with President Tinubu to ensure that ministries deliver on their mandates. So um, our tracking mechanism is a tracking mechanism that involves not just um, the coordination and delivery unit, but also the larger space of Nigerians where you would be conscious of what is the deliverable that is expected of Minister A, and that ministry would be able to engage with citizens um, for citizens to be able to track their performance and measure exactly how they're able to deliver on their, on their respective um, KPI. Interesting, because uh, from all you have said, it seems uh, it is no longer business as usual. Now that we have key performance indicators and perhaps key performance actions, but, but how has it been communicating with various ministries MDAs uh, such that they are willing to own all of all of this and deliver on their mandates and then how how often will all of their key performance indicators be reviewed um, we have had um, as I mentioned uh, bilateral sessions with each ministry and each minister um, the bilateral sessions were very detailed where we had the um, civil servants and all the um, political appointees within a ministry being part of the detailed um, three-day session where we um, explored with each ministry where they were able to have a full understanding and take ownership of their deliverable. And it also required um, a full input from the minister himself where we sit um, around the table with the minister to go line by line on what is expected of them. So that has been um, achieved in totality, ensuring that the ministers are online. Um, we're looking to commence um, an assessment of um, the respective ministries in January 2024. Um, we're going to have quarterly um, assessment of performance, which would culminate into an annual scorecard. Um, the quarterly assessment will start, as I mentioned, January 2024, whereby um, all ministries would have received their 2024 budget and they're able to clearly um, follow the roadmap map that has been so defined um, within the context of their deliverable. In addition to that, um, we are going to have a cabinet retreat um, in the first week of um, November where these final details will be hashed with the full cabinet um, um, in, in, in place with Mr. President. Um, at the end of it, we're going to culminate with a performance bond that will be signed by each ministry. Um, every minister and the permanent secretary will sign a performance board with Mr. President, which will detail what they're expected to do within the one year 2024 budget circle. And that performance board is what um, we're going to use to track the performance of that minister. And as I mentioned, um, citizen engagement is a key aspect of um, what we seek to achieve, um, ensuring that citizens are part of this assessment. Um, some of the um, clear submissions around deliverables that are project-based, um, we're going to deploy a, an application, a software where um, citizens are able to report back on project-based deliverables that the federal government has committed to doing within the period to, um, 2024. In addition, um, we're going to also look to see the best mechanism that we would use in ensuring that there's a citizen's, um, there's a citizen's um, accountability matrix relating to non-project-based deliverables. Um, so those are the areas that we're looking to have um, a full circle of accountability, meaning within the government, we have our um, consequence management um, framework. That consequence management framework will seek to ensure that um, there's consequences for action and inaction of ministries, departments, and agencies of government where they're 
unable to perform or deliver on deliverables that have been so agreed by themselves. Um, uh, just to also add that we've noted that there are several aspects of people's deliverables that are tied to other sectors or tied to other ministries, departments and agencies of government. So our job is also to ensure that we debottleneck those areas um, to the extent that a ministry, for example, has an area of his deliverable that um, is, is tied or has a direct linkage with another ministry. So our job is to follow up with the sister ministry to ensure that we debottleneck um, those aspects of um, interrelationship to make sure that um, there is synergy, to make sure that um, your own um, uh, deliverable um, is also being looked at, um, recognizing the other aspects um, of a deliverable. But primarily is that um, now we have an enhanced um, monitoring framework, an enhanced M&E deployment. We're also going to unveil our um, consequence management framework, which would seek to clearly define um, what it is that um, uh, um, would attract a non-performance in terms of um, the grading of um, the key performance indicators. It's very obvious that um, what you're doing is quite, um, your engagement is quite um, robust and a lot of you know, work that you're doing out there. But then you mentioned the aspect of the citizens, the citizenry. And I was going to ask about, you know, how you're ensuring that the, uh, you know, people key into the policies of the Tinubu administration, because it does appear that they do not really essentially understand the, the administration's policies. So, um, or is it that they do not understand the policy uh, thrust or that they are just simply impatient? Um, um, I think it's, um, we, we, we understand in certain instances um, there's a lack of full understanding, which is why um, within our um, uh, deliverables we've also identified an aspect where each ministry is required to engage with their um, stakeholders, sectoral stakeholders. Sectoral stakeholders are key to um, um, a deliverable of a ministry. You need for your stakeholders to be part of what you're delivering. And that understanding of the policy position from each sectoral stakeholder is integral. Um, we recognize that um, um, government is, is not, cannot function in isolation of um, the larger citizens, which is why there's a strengthened um, recognition of the role of citizens as it, as it relates to policy conceptualization, policy implementation, and also a, a monitoring, a mechaniz a monitoring um, mechanism, which we feel um, is very important. Um, but importantly, um, this is a, uh, Clear, I would say, um, I would say, private sector-based approach to governance, which um, President Tunubu is keen to deploy across ministries, departments, and agencies. Which is um, um, a lot of people that understand, um, 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 I would say, um, private sector approach towards um, value addition and delivery. This is clearly uh, um, what a lot of um, CEOs are. Are asked to do. You are required to um, defend your, your 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 mandate. You are required to ensure that you deliver within a specific time. And on our side, as I keep referencing, is that we would make sure that every aspect of the work that you need um, were provided. Meaning that budgetary provision is provided in totality for a project, so that you're able to have the resources you need. The release of those funds are also effectively provided as at when due. The interrelationship between ministries that have linkages are effectively um, debottlenecked and that synergy is enhanced. Um, so we're bringing this, um, I'll say, dynamic um, private sector approach to governance, um, which um, the president is leading. And I believe um, Nigerians and the larger citizens are going to see a, a full, I'll say, effective um, tracking mechanism, effective deployment of um, policy, um, coordination and implementation across ministries, departments and agencies of federal government. On uh, policy coordination in person of Hadiza Bala Usman, and she's been talking about uh, the issue of policy co coordination, which uh, she is her office. And uh, thank you for joining us again, uh, Hadiza. Uh, you mentioned earlier consequence management framework with regards to the bonds signed uh, with uh, ministries and departments, MDAs, basically. I recall that uh, as soon as the ministers were sworn in, uh, the spokesperson to the president in person of Ajirin Gulali mentioned that this was not business as usual and that uh, anyone who thinks that uh, they were going to have this job for a long while should 
uh, throw that thought out of the door, so to speak, because it was going to be based on performance. There was going to be a review of performance. So I need you to perhaps expatiate on consequence management framework. Uh, what does it imply? Is it that any ministry that does that underperforms, uh, there will be some review, whatever, what would happen to the ministry, the minister? Help us better understand what this consequence management framework is about. I'm concluded, as I mentioned, we're having a retreat um, in the first week of November. Um, at the retreat, we're going to unveil um, all these frameworks um, regarding consequence management, our M&E framework. We're going to unveil all of that. Um, so the details um, would, would be provided. But what is important is to recognize that um, um, President Tinubu has clearly um, um, identified this um, approach towards governance, which seeks to ensure that there is accountability, there is clarity on delivery and performance of ministries and departments and agencies of government. Um, as I mentioned, um, one of the things that we're, we're keen to ensure, and Mr. President has clearly um, given us that directive, is that um, performance is a very important thing. He has um, made a commitment to Nigerians, and that commitment is what he's going to ensure that is delivered um, by his respective appointees. Um, so we're all clear on that, and some of this performance is not just um, for the ministries, but also largely across um, the whole, um, I'll say, governance structure. Um, for all of us to know that um, we, we are hitting the ground running and we're ensuring that we deliver um, on our respective mandates. But one would say that one of the biggest challenges we have as a country uh, is the fact that uh, holding persons in positions of authority to account is quite a huge task and a challenge. Uh, what would be different this time around? We know that uh, there, there is a framework uh, being put in place. Some will also say that uh, this is on paper. Implementation might just be the issue. Talk to us what is going to happen differently this time around. Oh, absolutely. Um, you are going to see a huge difference in... Um, 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 President Tinubu's approach towards um, ensuring that um, his appointees are, um, adhere to um, key performance indicators that he's giving them. Um, as we know him, he's somebody that is very um, strong in delivering on um, his promises to citizens, and I believe we're all going to witness that in how he is able to ensure that ministers are delivering. And we can see within the short period, we've had um, very um, clear um, economic um, direction that he has given and he's very strong in ensuring that um, um, all hands are on deck and also every um, appointee is um, um, clear on delivering on their mandate. Um, another aspect of the coordination that we're doing is also ensuring that subnationals and state governments key into the larger um, sectoral policy positions that have um, attendant linkage with um, subnationals. Some of these key policy positions are around education, healthcare, agriculture, where we recognize that the state governments have an important role and we're um, working and seeking enhanced collaboration where we can improve on those um, healthcare, education, um, agricultural indices that um, the state governments have a huge role in. Um, so that um, relationship is, um, we're, we're exploring that and we are enhancing what um, or, um, already existed, but we understand that um, that um, collaboration is needed. Um, the subnationals have a huge and important role to play, and we are leveraging on our relationship with the uh, subnationals. Um, our entry point is the National Economic Council um, to um, promote um, that enhanced collaboration with state governments on delivering on those particular sectoral um, policy positions that have um, strengthened um, linkage with um, state governments. It's very good that you also mentioned the, uh, what you're doing, you know, as regards the subnationals. But could you help us highlight some of the most significant policy, you know, the policy challenges and successes your team has achieved in this regard and how they are being addressed? Oh, we have um, clearly defined um, those policy positions that we have been deployed and um, we're um, implementing them in totality. There are attendant linkages, as I mentioned, between other ministries, departments, and also subnationals. Um, we recognize um, the need to have um, the larger Nigeria, meaning um, organized private sector, and the larger stakeholders to key into um, those policy positions and provide us with input. Um, we believe that um, there is 
the um, larger stakeholders value addition when it comes to conceptualization, when it comes to implementation, when it comes to monitoring. Um, so we know that um, policy positions that are being implemented or that have been conceptualized um, have the um, full, I think, um, full understanding of the larger um, stakeholder groups. But importantly is recognizing where implementation sits, recognizing um, who the drivers and actors are in delivering on those um, um, key um, 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 achievements and also providing them the attendance support that they need, providing them the um, enabling environment to deliver on those, meaning that um, all um, apparatus within the governance circle is clear on the fact that we need to have that enhanced synergy um, to deploy on our um, deliverables as stipulated um, within um, the respective documents that have been um, so approved by uh, President Tinubu. All right, uh, still talking about subnationals, one issue that uh, comes to the fore is the matter of uh, duplication. How has that been addressed? Oh, um, there are areas of overlaps which um, we have recognized more even in within federal government space itself. Um, before we even go to subnationals, they are overlapping, I would say, um, duties that we're observing, but um, that, um, I'll, that detailed um, synergy or that um, breaking down of ownership of respective aspects of um, the task is where we are um, isolating such areas of overlap. Um, and um, as we go along, there will be um, several presidential pronouncements that will seek to address some of these areas of overlap and some of these areas of duplication. Um, as it relates to the subnationals, um, this is more to do with, I will say, enhanced collaboration as opposed to overlap um, because the subnationals are right there at the, um, I will say, right there with um, citizens where their implementation sits with the grassroots in various areas. So with subnationals, we look more at it for enhanced collaboration as opposed to an overlap. So um, areas of overlap where we see is mainly across certain um, sectoral positions within ministries, departments, and agencies. But as I mentioned, um, there would be policy pronouncement that will seek to address that. But what we're doing now is isolating tasks and deliverables and assigning them to respective owners. Um, that way the issue of overlap would be isolated pending when there could be um, presidential pronouncement that would finally address some of these um, attendant overlaps that have been observed. Well, let us get more to the brass tacks, you know, of, of these issues because, you know, experts believe that uh, there are uh, some important things yet left, to, uh, left unsaid or emphasized when the president you know, uh, talked about his eight-point agenda uh, for the key agenda for this administration. They said that the president should reach for the low-hanging fruit of privatization, which you mentioned earlier, and uh, concessions, liberalization, and cost cutting. They also believe that holding on to the four moribund state-owned refineries, for example, is a recipe, could be a recipe for, uh, for failure, that it should be privatized. This also goes to the Ajakuta Steel Company and all other steel sector assets. So you talked about, uh, you know, ensuring that budgetary provisions are made for some of these key ministerial, uh, in, um, uh, key uh, ministries. Do, does this argument make sense to you? As it relates to um, um, policy positions around our priority areas may not cover in totality areas of um, trust that you believe are important. Um, we are... As I mentioned, having this cabinet retreat in November, and we're going to um, look in details as to what it is that we um, may, may be seen to have fallen through the cracks. Um, but importantly is that all areas of um, policy positions that will seek to improve economic growth sit within um, our priority areas. And some of those um, priority areas as detailed um, have subcomponent of them that are not at the top but are contained um, um, within, uh, I'll say, um, the next line of the priority. But we will seek to um, ensure that um, we relook at all areas to see that um, the priorities um, that relates to um, the burning issues that will improve our economy are given those um, priority considerations. Also, um, you referenced um, certain um, privatization, um, speaking about refineries, these are all areas that the respective um, mandate ministries have been given a matching order to provide a, a, a workable roadmap that would seek to ensure that there is delivery, delivery 
of those um, items. Um, they're exploring to see what it is that will be in the best interest uh, of Nigeria, looking at the um, status of some of those um, um, government-owned enterprises. You mentioned the refineries, you mentioned a few others that I lost you, but um, those mandate ministries have been giving um, the matching order to explore what um, roadmap would achieve um, the deliverable the Mr. President wants within the shortest period and they're reverting back and all of those details will be unveiled recognizing the urgency of um, providing um, for example the refineries the petroleum products um, in in country to be refined so they've all been given um, those matching orders to, to to bring up those roadmaps and those roadmaps will be unveiled um, to citizens within the shortest period that speak to exactly um, how um, government intends to address um, those um, state-owned enterprises. Now, I I'm glad you mentioned the matter of urgency because a majority of Nigerians, when you speak with them, they will tell you that um, uh, that time is of essence and that they can't wait to get results from this government. And so when you keep saying that uh, there will be a time the president will make, there will be a presidential declaration, an announcement with some of these things, it would, be, it would be nice if you could put perhaps a time frame to it so that Nigerians can look forward to something. Because as it is, uh, a majority of Nigerians yeah. have said, that uh, this, this current administration, before it came into power, must have been putting all of these policies and ideas together and so should set the ball rolling as quickly as possible. Um, I, I think you also need to recognize that um, uh, President Tinubu has been um, quick in deploying um, his um, economic policy um, roadmap. These are one of the things that, that have happened literally immediately um, um, he was sworn in. So um, we, we need to recognize that a lot of um, um, attendant policy pronouncements that seek to address our economic challenges have been deployed and are effectively being um, implemented. Um, so um, beyond um, administrative um, pronouncement that seek to enhance um, policy positions that have already been deployed. I think um, the government, our government, has um, achieved a, a significant portion of that. Um, so whatever it is that we would continue to pronounce are, as relates to administration and implementation of policy positions because um, across the board we have deployed and uh, made clear our uh, policy pronouncement. We have our presidential policy advisory council reports that um, detailed um, what it is that is expected across each sector. So all of those have been provided. Now is more of implementation and I believe um, Nigerians and the larger public would have seen um, how um, effective in terms of the urgency with which um, decisions were taking, um, the, the, the way our administration has been um, able to immediately um, take strong um, positions across uh, um, the sectors. Well, Nigeria is part of the global ecosystem and, you know, anything that happens uh, uh, around the world, across the world, usually have impact, you know, in, on Nigeria. Uh, we have, uh, you know, after the, the aftermath of the, uh, we are in the post-pandemic era, we, all, we also talked about the Russia-Ukraine war, which had its own global effect and also national effect on, on Nigeria. And now we are talking about Israeli-Gaza, uh, Israeli-Gaza conflict, where the, Saudi Arabia is also, you know, calling on, you know, Nigeria and other IOC countries, you know, to member countries to, you know, have a conversation as regards this. So in, in this ever evolving landscape of global affairs, what strategies do you think or are you putting in place to adapt and respond to changing policy priorities and international dynamics? Oh, absolutely. Um, we're very um, strong in that. As you can see, um, the submission made by the Honorable Minister of um, Budget and National Planning, where he um, um, unveiled the MTEF at the Federal Executive Council. He recognized all those attendant global issues that um, have effect on um, our own economy. So um, we have that clarity of understanding and we recognize it within the MTEF and we're going to continue recognizing and tracking it as it evolves. Um, we're an oil producing country so we know the international um, benchmarking across um, several um, sectors have an attendant um, relationship with the Nigerian economy and we are up to speed in tracking and evolving our policy positions as we um, recognize the international dynamics um, across um, the um, oil and gas sector, across the uh, um, challenge within the 
um, Ukrainian war and every other attendant international um, um, issues that evolve. We're very mindful of that. And as I said, you can see um, those have been recognized within the MTEF that was unveiled at the Federal Executive Council yesterday. Speaking with uh, the essay to the president on policy coordination, Hadiz Abala Usman, and I was asking you earlier that uh, on the matter of security, I know that you met with uh, the Minister of Defense recently. Nigerians will want to understand what uh, policy direction uh, that ministry is taking to address the matter of insecurity in the country as it is critical to everyone and every sector of the country. Um, we had a detailed session with the ministers of um, defense where they um, owned their deliverables and um, their team had looked to ensure that um, they are ready to um, ensure that those KPIs are addressed. Um, some of the aspect of the um, defense and I'll say security um, deliverables speak to an enhanced um, security architecture that um, the Ministry of Defense would um, unveiled through their service chiefs. Um, we've had the first um, um, in interaction. We're having a second layer interaction where we're going to engage in detail with the service chiefs. What is important is um, security is a top priority of President Tinubu and he has ensured that all resources are pri prioritized for security deployment. Um, we can see within our supplementary budget, within every areas that um, the president has made um, pronouncement, he has prioritize um, our security and we can see um, a lot of key um, achievements have been done within the shortest period um, by um, the, the, the agencies in the um, security architecture of the country. So that is a top priority. Um, the National Security Advisor also um, has a detailed overview of the um, span of um, security deployment that have been done, identifying some of those flashpoints. Um, the respective areas of um, attendant accountability within the security architecture um, is what we're fine tuning with the respective, uh, um, um, I would say, mandate um, 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 structures that have the ownership of deploying. But um, the priority is clear. Um, President Tinubu is very, very keen and supportive um, of the security architecture that has been um, deployed to him. But the exact details of um, some of those components are areas that have um, security considerations that were not um, immediately um, available for us to, to, to expatiate on. But the um, respective owners of those deliverables will, um, at a appropriate time, um, provide the citizens with updates on um, the respective aspects of their security deployment as they seek to um, enhance and implement the um, updated security architecture um, that um, um, President Tinubu has so approved for them. And as a fine place to leave this conversation, Hadiza Bala Usman, uh, SA2 President Tinubu on policy coordination. Thank you for your time on the program. Uh, thank you for having me.